Thank you, Sister Bertha. Elaine, thank you so much for the wonderful music. Good morning, Axon here. Today is July 12th, July 12th at 10.30 a.m. I am Mija Cho. I'm a pastor at Axon Hill United Methodist Church. I am so glad you are here today. Let us bring our heart mind and soul to watch God this beautiful sunny day. Let us begin call to worship our faithful leader, Brother Neville Campbell Adams lead us call to worship. Brother Neville, would you unmute yourself and lead us in the call to worship? Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. 
Please Good morning. Us, please, please join me in the call to worship. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, who has set us free. Thank you. We are glad to be here this morning. This is a time to offer our praise to God. With joy, we thank God for all the blessings that have been poured on us. Come, let us worship God who showers us with mercy. Give praise to God who offers rest and peace. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We are so glad to see you in this wonderful summer, sunny day. This is the day that the Lord has made for us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The church is not a building. The church is the people of God who gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. Oxenium is a multiracial congregation which truly embodies the body of Christ that represents God's kingdom here at Oxen Hill. We also strive to be a multi-generation congregation that we include our children, youth, and young adults to be a leader of the church. They are not the church of tomorrow, rather they are the church of today. So we are so grateful we worship together with our young you know, adult and children news. I'm gonna do some couple announcement. We have a United Methodist men meeting right after this year, June. So we invite all men and young adults, including youth and children. Cat team will meet July 23rd at 5 p.m. at our Tati parking lot. If you are tech savvy and want to contribute your talent for the kingdom of God, please let me know or our brother Steve let him know. We have a bread ministry on every Tuesday. Last week, I heard that we have more young volunteers to participate in the ministry. Bless are those who participated in this ministry in this unusual time. Please continue to support bread ministry we need a helping hands and feet of Jesus Christ. So please contact the Valeria Harrison. We have a, we're going to have a prayer by ministry every Thursday, starting July 26th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. If you would like to share your prayer concerns, please email me as well as your sister Betty. We have a Bible study on every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. via Zoom, with the book, Canoeing the Mountain. We have a wonderful, faithful participate, and even little Mali. Please come and see what we are doing and how we are canoeing the mountain. We kept this take a good look into the coffin. That is an interesting theme and titles. So now our wonderful musician, Maestro, Sister Elaine, lead us blessed assurance. If you are able, uh, you can sing together. Mm -hmm.
Amen, amen. This is my song, this is my story. We praise the Lord all the days of our lives. Thank you, Sister Elaine, for the beautiful music. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Creator of the visible and invisible, divine deliverer, life-sustaining spirit, all that is depends upon you and rejoice in your praise. We thank you for the technology to connect with each other. And we are so grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and free us to live as your children. Your spirit both inspires and promotes us our growth in Jesus Christ. All whom you deliver from sin and death praise you in your household. Almighty God, I offer special prayer for our brother Bill Dempsey as he is battling with cancer. Please take away all the unproductive cells from his body and replace with good cells and also let him feel your healing presence, your love and your grace. Give him strength, give him confidence in you, no matter what situation he has. I believe you work with him every moment of his life. Almighty God, we especially rejoice in the reassuring voice of the Spirit and calling us with one loving family with you who are to you, Holy Spirit, in this place as we attune our heart and mind right now. Rekindle the heart of your love so that we can do great things for your kingdom and worship you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now our wonderful brother, Donald Hansels, will read the word of God. Brother Donald, please unmute yourselves. He will be reading from ESV version, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 11. Thank you, Pastor Cho. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Life in the spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life have set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on things of the spirit. For to set, you, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on flesh, on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brother Donald. Thank you. Now let us hear musical selection, Holy Spirit, Rain Down, played by our maestro, wonderful musician, Sister Elaine, and followed by New Testament reading by Marlene Hansels. Thank you for the oblit music, Sister Elaine. Yes, Holy Spirit, rain down on us, rain down on us. We need you, Holy Spirit. Let your power heal us, restore us, and renew us as we stand on your word. Thank you, Sister Elaine, the wonderful music. Now, Sister Melin, please unmute yourself, read for the gospel reading, Matthew chapter 13, one through nine. 18 and 23, and followed by musical selection, order by, order my steps. Good morning, church. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the And great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. 
And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they immediately, they immediately sprang up. Since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, he withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. The parable of the sower explained. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures it for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on the account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches keep the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Great job, Sister Melanie. I'm so proud of you. Great job. Two thumbs up. I'm so excited that our young people read the scriptures and come to the worship together and lift up their souls to God. Great job. Thank you. Sister Elaine, would you lead us the music, Order My Steps? Thank you. 
Thank you, Sister Elaine, for the uplift music. Order our steps in your word, O oh God. Guide us and anoint us so that we please you whatever we do. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to listen, order our steps in every way so that we can please you whatever we do. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, rain down your spirit upon us, so that let your word of healing and blessings be incarnated in every moment of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Elaine. It was a spirit-filled music. As we see unrest in our society with the pandemic and racial tensions, hearing before the police, protest, other turmoil, it is so difficult to have peace in our spirit. As we seek God's justice and God's peace in our midst, I ask myself, who can bring peace and justice in our midst? Is it God? Is it someone else? The answer is, is to fix our minds upon Christ who has the power of the life-giving spirit and has freed us from the law of sin and death. In today's reading that our brother Donald read for us wonderfully, there are several competing values that shaped and influenced Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul acknowledged the different context of his writing. First, the church in Rome needed instruction of the roles of Jews and Gentiles in living their Christian lives. In 49 CE, seven years before the composition of the letter, Jew and Jewish Christians were forced to leave Rome Subsequently, the Jewish Christians returned to Rome and challenged Jewish and Gentile congregation with their competing theological viewpoints on how to live Christian lives. For example, like this day, whether we wear masks or not, in terms of our, our freedom. They were struggling with what it means to embrace real freedom and equality in the midst of uneasy society. Second, the Corinthian church had questioned the authority of Paul's apostleship over issues of eating meat and sacrifice to idols. Third, the churches in Gladia also argued over whether new converters must be circumcised and keep the Jewish law in order to be, become resumated children of Abraham. Fourth, the church in Jerusalem, which was considered as the mother church, also suspected also preaching of his Jewish law-free Gentile mission. These challenges echoes in Paul's writing to the church in Rome. And Paul insisted upon embracing Jewish and Gentile believers into one family of God. Paul stressed a distinction between the law of the spirit in Christ and the law of sin and death in his letter to the Romans. 
Here the word for law in Greek is nomos, which refers to moral instruction given by Christ, especially the precept concerning love. To live the law of the Spirit in Christ is based upon love, which makes forgiveness and salvation make possible. As we hear the first word in Romans chapter 1, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, there's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. How is this possible? Well, it is possible because Jesus Christ is a sinless and Jesus Christ was condemned for us. Well, the law of Moses was unable to save us because the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did first send God's only son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ became fully human and represent all humanity to God and sacrificed on account of our sins. Christ's resurrections has power, life-giving spirit that empowers to live our lives that lead us into life and peace. So we cannot be judged without love. We cannot be condemned in light of the world views. Paul does not say that the law is bad. However, Instead, he says the law is good and holy. For the law reveals our sin and also it reveals God's grace on a cross. God sent God's only son, Jesus Christ, to free us from our sins. Basically, Paul claims God just by us with God's grace, that we are forgiven in Jesus Christ, which means we are saved by God's grace in Jesus Christ, so that no one, no one, no one condemns us. It also invites us to the journey of sanctifications. What is the sanctification? Raise your hands if you know the means of sanctification. Yeah, I know you guys know the, what it means of sanctification. Good, good. Sanctification means we need to grow in holiness to the perfection in love. In another word, we must grow our faith by living of a life of the spirit so that we can fully embrace our freedom and salvation. As we are saved by God's grace in Jesus Christ, we were as a newborn baby, but we cannot remain as a newborn baby. We need to grow every day and every day. We as a followers of Jesus Christ, we must walk our journey to be more like Jesus Christ. When we choose money over God, we become slaves to money. When we choose popularity over God, we become slaves to popularity. But when we choose God, we can fully enjoy that what God has given to us. So brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, remember when we are feeling accused, that is not from God. Instead, it comes from sin. So don't let sin enslave you. We are set free by God's grace to embrace our forgiveness and salvations. So when someone gives you a hard time, because of your skin colors, because of your accent, because of your outward appearance, don't be discouraged. 
embrace them with God's grace so that we can fully and truly enjoy the freedom that God grants us with peace and joy. When we are in the flesh, we cannot please God because we are dominated by your sinful nature that causes us to turn away from God. But when we live in the law of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells in you, within you, and empowers you to live a life that pleases in God whenever you do. Because Christ Jesus was condemned for me and for you, for all God's people, and meet fully the lost requirement. So this life is guided by the power of the Holy Spirit and make us walk in the spirit of the living God every day and every moment of our lives. When we hear from someone who does not see you, your value as a precious child of God, don't be deceived by this liar. No matter what anyone says, remember, remember the Holy Spirit always confirms in us who we are as precious children of God. This is the truth and the truth that set us free. Amen? Amen? When we live by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no fear in our heart. When we live in the realm of self-serving life that turns away from God, then fear and anxiety enslave us. Our adoption as precious children of God is based upon God's love and grace in Jesus Christ. God's love overcomes fear. This does not mean that we live pain-free lives. Instead, life in Christ may involve suffering, but that suffering is not our final destiny. Rather, life in Christ will take into God's glory. Our present suffering cannot compare to what God has prepared for us in our eternal salvations. When we live under the control of the flesh, we live in fear that shapes our future. So brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, don't let fear to determine your future. Don't let fear to determine your future. Those who live in the spirit of Christ allow faith and hope to determine their future so that they can thrive and they can be blessed and they can be a blessing. So let your faith and hope determine your future so that you can be blessed and be a blessings to others. Our journey to freedom depends upon how we choose in our lives. I want to share a story. Recently, I witnessed one who chose to live in the spirit in Christ. Antonio Guan Jr., who is African-American, an 18-year-old high school senior. Do you know him? He cleaned the street of his neighborhood on Bailey Avenue in Buffalo, New York. He walked all night after he saw the news and Bailey Avenue was vandalized and covered in broken glasses and trash from protests relating to the murder of our brother, George Floyd. He was shocked that his hometown had turned violent in a confrontation between protesters and the police. He said to the media that, quote, 
I was so sad to watch all of that. There was a huge mess in downtown court. So he decided to go out to clean the street. He started to clean at 2 a.m. in the morning and did not stop cleaning for the next 10 hours because he wanted to finish cleaning before people started going to work. He collected nearly two dozen trash bags, which he took home, put on his curb for garbage pickup. He was surprised to see that his good work was sprayed on Facebook saying, quote, when I woke up and saw I was so, I was getting all these texts and texts thanking me, I couldn't believe it. It was the biggest surprise ever, quote. Nicole Hawkins, who lives in Bopalo, catch the Guan's good deed early that morning and took a picture of him and post them on her Facebook. Hawkins witnessed that, quote, I was driving down barely on my way to the store after the riots and I observed a young man sweeping up piles of garbage, quote, after she talked with Guan, she found out that he would be graduating from Hot Tech and want to attend college. After people saw the posting, they started donating money for him to buy his books, computers, to help him pay for college. Then he got offered of his 2004 Ford Mustang was his dream car and another person offered to pay for his insurance. And several others set up the GoFundMe account for him to pay his expense and bought like $5,800. Another big surprise came when he was offered a four year scholarship from Medallier College. his integrity and care for the community, for God's kingdom, brought him blessings beyond his imaginations. His story reminds and inspires what it means to live in the spirit Christ Jesus. We are one body one community. We are all interconnected. The gospel is all about the relationships. It is about the building loving relationship with God and with each other. We are, Oxonier UMC is a spirit-led community and we can become one complete body of Christ when we share God's love with each other through bread ministry, through prayers, through worship service, through our gifts, through our presence. Even we invite our children and grandchildren to participate in worship service. But when sin enters our shared body through racism, hate, bigotry, or selfishness with inequality, our body grows sick and can die. However, living in the spirit makes it possible to nourish the warm body of Christ as a loving community. So God's kingdom come here at Oxenil United Methodist Church as it is heaven. When we choose to live a life in the spirit, we can enjoy true freedom and God's blessings upon our lives. Dear church, the message is clear. Christ set us free completely, completely. So sin 
no longer has power over us. God does not condemn us. Instead, God's grace embraces us and frees us from the bondage of sin. God gave us freedom to overcome sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are dead to sin, and we are alive in the Spirit because Christ's body is raised from the dead, and Christ's tomb is empty. Sometimes, sometimes we are weary. When we journey, when you walk toward being more like Christ. But sometimes we can dance, we can dance and sing a song through our journey as long as we surrender our will to the spirit of Christ, to Christ. When we set our mind on Christ, on the things on spirit, we can please God who give us new life and strength and peace. So brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, let us walk with God every day. Every day, let's sing and praise God, praise God, and grow our faith to set our mind on the Christ so we can enjoy and freedom and embrace God's given freedom and blessings in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 In response to God's blessings and love, God give us freedom and salvation freely and God does not condemn us. So let us show our faithful stewardship for the God's kingdom so that God will return us and bless us abundantly beyond our imaginations like Guan. There are several ways you can give thanks to God at Oxenil United Methodist Church so that we can extend God's kingdom here on earth and share Christ's love through our gifts. So our fantastic musician, Sister Elaine, Mary, will play offering songs while we are giving to God. We can give uh, tithes and offering through PayPal on our website, www.oxenilumc.com or cash apps. Or also you can mail your check to the church. It doesn't matter how much you give, $1 or 50 cents, or $500, God sees your quality of heart. So let us show our gratitude to God to share God's love in our community.
Thank you, CC Elaine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Generous God, you promised us, therefore, there is no condemnation who are in Jesus Christ. What a blessing we have. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Now we offer our tithes and offerings to respond to your grace and your love. Thank you for your blessing you have poured upon our lives. Receive these blessings and these gifts that they may become the seed of hope and love. Let these gifts become the 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold to expand God's kingdom abundantly so that we can be a beacon of light in this community for your kingdoms. Let the church says, Amen. 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 Uh, we come, we, our sister Elaine will lead us uh, trust and obey. Before we do that, uh, I just want to make sure that we have a United Methodist Men's Meeting right after service. And uh, please contact Valerie Harrison for the bread ministry. Um, Vivian, our lay leader, wonderful lay leader, do we have any announcement? Okay. So let us hear the trust and obey. And <laughs> Pastor Cho, you're muted. Pastor Cho. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Elaine. Thank you so much for your spirit field, you know, songs. It all lift, all lift our souls. Thank you so much. Uh, before we go, I have one more announcement that we are planning to do parking lot service uh, July 26th. So that we invite you to bring your lawn chair um, and also you can stay in the car to the year. So we're gonna test out the July 23rd. So we will give you further information how we're gonna do the parking lot service, but we set the date July 26. So I just wanna give you word out. So invite your friends and families. We may change worship time at the time, probably 9.30 a.m. But we have to meet while we're in a uh, task force team again and church council. And we have to uh, uh, discuss with our leaders again for their matters. But we 
to ward out. We set the date July 26 for the parking lot service. Uh, so we will give you further information. Well, dear Oxen here, now receive benedictions upon you. Today, God has opened our ears to God's word, our eyes to God's purpose for your lives. God has big plan for you, for Oxen Hill United Methodist Church. God opens your heart to God's presence. We are set free to embrace forgiveness and salvation. So now go in peace as a people who hear with your eyes, your, your ears, and understand with your heart to live in the spirit in Jesus Christ, that your word and that your actions might bear fruit in your lives so that you can extend the kingdom of God here on earth at Oxenil United Message Church. So I bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you, keep you. May God's countenance shine upon you. Amen. 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 So now I'm going to unmute everyone so you can greet with each other. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, oh, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Love you guys. Miss you. I'm Miss Annie. Hi, Hello. Mr. Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> Get it, Bob. Good afternoon, sir. 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 Good afternoon, Oh my, come on. Come on. <laughs> the noise. Hey, Valerie. All right. We are the Miss. We are the Miss. We are the Miss. We are the Miss. We are have a blessing. Hey, what do you think of the Washington football red uh, new new name, Steve? What is it? Uh, it won't. You know, they can change the name to whatever they want. They, it's going to be called the Red Wolf. People won't mind if they win football games. Red Wolf. 